Good morning, High Tides. It's Memorial Day weekend and we've only got two more weeks of school left, so make sure to take advantage of all your learning. This year you've probably gotten to know a lot of teachers, but there's still so many that we don't know about. So this episode we're going to take the time to learn about three teachers here at Beach High. First, let's start off with the band teacher. I went to, despite the shirt that I have on right now, this is Emily Groff, who gave it to me. I went to the University of Miami, and I studied studio music and jazz, saxophone performance. And I went there for four years. I got the bachelor's degree in May 2008. I also, though, I've been in and out of school the past few years. I've kind of been to every school, well, I've almost been to every school in Miami. I've been to Miami Dade North, I've been to Wolfson, I've been to FIU, I've been to Barry. But uh, the degree that I got, uh, my music degree is from UM. It's really awesome to have talented students. And it's really great to have students that are just beginning. But I guess the one thing that is really um, the most important is an interest in learning. You know, I've had students that are really talented and things that you tell them go in one ear and come out the next. You know, we have other students that have, been, have asked to be in the band for years and then they enroll in the class and then the same thing. Everything goes in one ear and goes out the next and they think they don't know it's that difficult. But students that generally eat up every word that you say that can go home and work on what you ask them to, go home and listen to the records you tell them to, invest in lessons, audition for the honor bands, come after school, come at lunch. It's really awesome to see and have those students because that's kind of what it takes to play music on that level. It's not it's not easy. You know, it's an art, so and it's an elective here in school. So anybody, I guess you can say, can take it. So sometimes because of its accessibility, everyone thinks, oh, I know a few notes, I'm a musician type of, you know? But it goes so much deeper than that. It's so much. It goes so much. It goes beyond that, and it deals with everything I mentioned: coming and after school, during lunch, going to the store, buying the right equipment, reading the say, reading the the right etudes from the books. Um, yada 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 yada. Uh, I used to draw a lot when I was in elementary school. Nothing crazy, but I used to I used to like doodle a lot. And when I got to middle school in New York, I had to, um, in the sixth grade, choose between music and art. And obviously it was, yeah, I'm gonna do art. And my dad, I remember he was sitting down eating, and he had to sign the form for me. He was watching, I wanna say hockey, I wanna say we were watching the New York Rangers play. And he was like, hey, why don't you try music? It can take you places. That was the exact, that was the exact phrase. Hey, why don't you try music? You know, it can take you places. And, that's the and that was it. I signed up for music. So oh, you know why not? Let's give it a shot. And yeah, I have devoted my last the last 15 years of my life, 20 years of my life to music. Fig is an interesting guy. Generally, I feel apathetic about most things. So yeah. Okay. Fig is great. Bro, I haven't done this in like... What's this called? Stoic Geometry? Stoic Geometry. Yeah, Stoic Just geometry. learning um, Stoic Geometry in the band room. We do it all in here. Don't forget it. All day, every day. Did you get it? So we got, man. Mr. Fig is a true musician and a Beach High graduate. So now let's hear about a program that many of you may not know about.
Hi, my name is Carol Lorenzo Volo. How long have you been working with special needs kids? Um, over 15 years. I've been teaching for 17. Why is this program important for um, Providing a special needs program in a high school gives students with special needs the opportunity to um, learn life skills as well as socialize with their peers and other members of the community. And during school, they learn life skills, academic skills, social skills, and this is great for them to be able to develop these um, skills so that when they do become independent adults, hopefully, they'll be able to participate in society and be productive. Um, what is the best part of the best part of working with my students um, is the unconditional love you get from your students and being able to provide a safe place for them throughout the day so that they can learn and develop their independent learning skills. What usually happens on a daily basis? On a daily basis when the students come in, I greet them. Um, the staff and I prepare breakfast for them and some of them learn how to prepare simple breakfasts with toast, um, cereal and milk. And these are little things that we take for granted. But for them, these are big accomplishments. After breakfast, they usually then go onto the computer and we start their academic activities, either on the computer or through games yeah. that help develop their life skills. Students have another activity where they also develop more um, academic skills or daily living skills, and then we get ready to go. It's a pretty easy going day. Just if you see my students in school, please make sure just to say hi to them, um, greet them. They are very loving and caring, and they just want to be treated like anybody else. What's your name? Emily. Oh, do you like school? Yeah, I do. How old are you? 22. What's your favorite part of school? My favorite part of school is math. Who's your best friend? My teacher. Uh, and do you like your teacher? Yeah, I do. Uh, she loves bake cookie of white. What do you want to work when you're older? When you're older, I'll be able to have a bakery. Okay. Uh, so, uh, tell us your name. Uh, uh, hi, hi. Hi. How old are you? 60 to 12. You're 60 to 12? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, do you like school? Yeah, it's good too. Who's your best friend? Uh, 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 so you get along with a lot of the students? Yeah. Do you like your teacher? Uh, like the way you said. Yeah, do you like her? Yeah. What a dedicated teacher who really loves her students. Now let's hear about a man who not only loves his children, but loves art. My name is Tom Virgin. I teach art at Miami Beach Senior High School. I think that teaching art is like teaching people how to eat ice cream. I mean, you know, everybody has their own way of doing it. And the product of art is this self-expression that almost can't be wrong. But, that being said, the techniques of making art are skills, and teaching skills are really important. If your writing teacher teaches you to write, but you spell everything wrong, it's not writing, it's secret code. So, with art, if you only do stuff your way, I don't feel like I'm helping you to grow into skills that you can then do other things well. They're working on big self-portraits. I put it up everywhere I can in Miami-Dade County Public Schools, in Walgreens, in Normandy Isle, at exhibitions all over the county. Um, there's a kid who's in Miss Money's room who's sending a piece off to Washington, D.C. for a year. And I've had kids over the last 20 years 
show their work all over the country. And I have many students who are making art. I think that wanting to make things is something that happens to a lot of people. And I think making art can happen to you at any time. You can learn one skill and say, wow, this is great. And take that skill and make a whole career out of it. And you can find out that learning is really great. And you can learn a thousand different skills and use all those skills to communicate. And I think that's the important part of art, communicating one soul to another. Hi Tides, we just learned about three amazing teachers here at our school. There are still many more to learn about that have very interesting lives, so make sure you get to talk to them. Hi Tides, I hope you have a great weekend.